Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number three of the PCL and we are up against Matt O'Shea and his Montreal Milotics. And uh, this was a rough matchup. I actually did try to uh, record this one live, but we are going to post calm this because I was noticeably distracted. My sister was in the hospital at the time and uh, I think I actually played this match about an hour, a couple hours right after I found out. Yeah, I was noticeably distracted. It was not great. It was just not the best recording and uh, contrary to popular relief, I actually do have some standards for what I put out there. So it's gonna be post comp, but either way, let's just get into the matchup. Uh, he has a really scary team. This is one of the most difficult um, matchups that I've had in a very long time. I did not know how to build around this team and you don't know how much I struggled. This is the matchup right here. You don't know how much I struggled against certain matchups. So going into this match, I knew, I 100% knew that he would want to uh, rock out with a Needle Queen lead. I struggled so much. I thought about the team over a couple days and I went back and forth over whether or not to go balls deep and go for a thousand arrows turn one. And I kept thinking, would he be the type of guy to bring a Sheka Needle Queen? I don't know. I struggled with it so, so much because if my Zygarde goes down, then that could potentially be the game and on turn one. That was the biggest uh, concern of mine. Obviously the, the Altaria, the the, the Raichu Coco combination. He also had a Halucha, which he didn't end up bringing. That just kind of blew my mind. I did kind of have some countermeasures for it, but not too, too many. Also, I was incredibly scared of the Gorgeist. I did have Crunch on the Zygarde just for it, but honestly, it was the main reason why I couldn't ban my Zygarde. I had to bring Life Orb Zygarde with Dragon Dance. I thought it would be the best counter for his team overall, but I had to be able to Thousand Arrows and then pivot into a Crunch if I had to against that Gorgeist. That is pretty much the matchup. Again, still a really, really scary matchup, but hopefully I can try to maneuver around it. I ended up, again, I struggled so, so much. If this was a Shuckaberry Nita Queen, I knew 100% that he was going to lead Nita Queen, but if this is a potential Shuck a Shuckaberry Nita Queen, then I could be in a huge amount of trouble. But ultimately, I decided to go for it, go balls deep on this one, and I just click it. I just clicked Thousand Arrows. And um, even. I don't think I know his spread, but uh, even going into this uh, turn, I knew that if it was like max defense, he had a chance of taking it, but uh, I had to go for it. Uh, I don't think it was max defense. I think it might have been a roll, but um, he also could have expected just to take it uh, if I wasn't life warped. If I wasn't life warped, then he obviously has a chance, but the Coco comes in. And as soon as I switched out, I thought, he's going to U-turn. This was a mistake. He does go for the U-turn. As soon as I clicked uh, the switch out, I knew it was a mistake, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. He goes out into the Alolan Raichu, which of course is double speed and is, of course, incredibly scary. But uh, I was calculating out U-turn. People sleep on Electros. Electros has 115 at base attack. And um, just a standard ass U-turn going into an Alolan Raichu, it is super effective, but uh, it just does so much damage. And after I saw that calc, I felt really confident being able to uh, U-turn out into my Zygarde and potentially uh, threaten extreme speed. Now, here is another huge, huge turn where I just really struggled. I really wanted to click Thousand Arrows because I knew he would have to switch out and preserve it. I knew... I knew I should have clicked Thousand Arrows, but I went with the super safe route. Um, Matt, after the match, told me, uh, you know, you had to go for extreme speed. You, That was not a risk that I was a, uh, in a position to take. But the, the storyline around this match is just me having to make super aggressive plays in order to kind of match his, his um, overall team because I really don't have the same type of threats that he does. And he has uh, one of the strongest maps and especially one of the strongest matchups against me that I think I'm going to face for most of the season. So a theme of this match is going to be me trying to make aggressive plays, trying to get myself in it. And I think Thousand Arrows was honestly a play that I had to make. And and honestly, I already risked the entire game on turn one with my Thousand Arrows into, into a potential Shaka Nita Queen. So we see just a few turns going on between my Skarmory and my uh, Crooked Eye. I thought it was important to, to knock it off, get rocks up. Uh, it didn't really threaten me too, too much. So now this Altaria comes in. And I don't quite remember what I do, but I believe I, I roar this thing out because I know this thing wants a Dragon Dance on my face. This Crooked Eye is meant to be an, an anti-setup Mon because he has Mons that are going to want to set up on my Crocodile. It's going to think that that the uh, Haluch is free to Sword Dance up. It's it's going to think that the um, Altaria is very free to Dragon Dance up on. So uh, Crocodile is 
an important mon to pack the roar on of uh, because for so many in so many instances it is pretty free setup for um whatever you're up against but i do drag out the um skarmory which is unfortunate because i can't really touch this thing at all all i have is rocks he's seen my entire thing i'm, pre I'm pretty sure he, well i think he has to assume that i have eq but eq um knock off rocks and roar so he knows that um Skarmory can pretty much roost up for free. I think it's going to roost up uh, on this turn as I try to make somewhat of an aggressive play into my uh, Electros. It just takes the opportunity to get up um, to full HP. And again, this was another bit of uh, just interesting mind games because I don't know if he's going to want to switch out. I thought for sure he was going to try to switch out, right? I didn't think that he was he would want to stay in and potentially just eat up a a Thunderbolt. But uh, I tried to Toxic directly into the Skarmory, and it didn't work out for me. I thought he would try to... Um, if anything, I thought he would try to take advantage of it by going into the Altaria and try to Dragon Ants up on, on this thing. But it didn't work out that way. He Whirlwinds uh, repeatedly. And I'm trying to get a favorable matchup just trying to switch around, but this whirlwinding is such a huge pain because it's not dragging me out into anything that i want to be dragged out into uh until i'm dragged down into, into this thing i'm thinking look it might it might just uh whirlwind again uh it might attack and i'm running calcs right and after a round of life orb um i think i'm gonna see it I, if i remember correctly um i get it brought down to 85 hp yeah I, and i believe a max roll for a brave bird for my no investment brave bird is at like 85 or 86 points of hp thankfully he didn't get that crazy roll but um i know i'm gonna deal damage to myself just through um life orb and whatnot but he ends up sacking off the raichu i guess he didn't think that it was going to do my, well to be fair i think it was his best sack probably that's probably more than like the, the potential threat that it could have been in the later game that was probably on his mind more but takes it as an opportunity to go out into this thing now i know i'm in a, i'm i'm in a bad situation here because um my that was an error is, is gonna do is not gonna do enough and I, um i know he's gonna take this as an opportunity to dragon dance up so my thinking is i have to dragon dance with him just to not waste this turn and to be able to hit him harder next turn and still out speed and still just th uh threaten this thing right so i have to force him to attack me because uh, if I just go for Thousand Arrows, then he can roost off damage. He can um, get to plus three, plus six. He can do whatever the heck he wants at that point. If I just um, let him... And if anything, I'm going to take myself out to Life Orb. He can play out, off of that as well. He can roost up as I take myself out to, to Life Orb. So I knew that I had to Dragon Dance up with him. And that was another huge, huge risk that I had to take. Again, because of this matchup situation. And because I know Matt O'Shea is a fantastic battler. But... Uh, he ends up, I, I end up finally forcing him to, to attack me, and I'm trying to cycle Intimidates at this point. I'm just trying to kind of mitigate uh, this situation here. Uh, I maybe could have roared, I don't know. But regardless, I ju I'm just happy with the Intimidate, I guess. And uh, I switch out and need, need Electros, hoping to actually um, sack it off, because I was really afraid that this thing was going to take advantage of my Electros and try to set up, but I guess he had to... Of respect the toxic a little bit i don't know regardless i take this as an opportunity to finally just uh get intimidated off and bring it down to minus one um this is really the point in the match where it's really starting to sink in that i don't have good answers to the altaria i didn't bring i, I don't know my team doesn't have the best answers to it in general but definitely not the team that i brought the six that i brought were not well equipped to handle this at all and um then he ends up roosting up again and i realize i'm in trouble because this is a max hp altaria I, I found it after the match uh i'm gonna try to put the uh full sets i do have his full set so i'll try to put that um make that available but so many of my mons just cannot do over half to this altario because it is so bulky and he did invest a whole lot of bulk into it um and just expecting to be able to drag an ants up to to be able to um handle my team better but so much of my team is not equipped to do that much damage to an altaria and uh i think he, and i think yeah his game plan was always to reasonably expect to be able to um handle my 
my bigger threats er, uh, in the early game and then go on from there. But at this point, I know that I have to um, give up the Crooked Owl. No matter what, it was going to go down. And, and there was no point in letting anything else uh, take any damage in this situation. But here's another huge, huge, huge play. I had my hand hovering over the touchscreen with my stylus in my fingers. And my stylus accidentally clicked my move. I genuinely did not know what move I clicked in that moment. The only thing that I knew was that I clicked a move and I definitely did not Mega Evolve. So uh, immediately, as soon as it happened, I l started DMing him and apologizing because uh, it, I know that there's a Mega Rule. It was a complete accident, but it opened up a big question because we didn't end up knowing what kind of a, an impact it would have on the match overall because he assumed that I was max speed Manectric, which uh, would have affected this turn coming up right now. So yeah, he ends up clicking U-turn here and uh, in his mind, if I'd Mega Evolved, I would have outsped the Coco, and Coco would have had to uh, taken this Vol Switch. I would have had to um, give him a little bit of Switch priority, but uh, it turns out that my particular spread undersped his Tapu Coco even after a Mega Evolved. So this would have played exactly the same, except I actually missed out on a few points of uh, HP on this Altaria, which might have mattered, who knows. But uh, in the end, I think we agreed that. Um, it didn't actually end up the sequence of plays that would have ended up happening because now it allows me to go into my X Cloud. It gives it gives me a little bit of chip with with rocks, Volt Switch, which which was what he was upset about. Um, and it and it would have been the case that he wouldn't have had to take that chip if I outsped, but I didn't. It allows me to get the Switch Initiative, go into X Cloud. He has to sack off the the Skarmory, which he was upset about. He he didn't um think that he had to uh sacrifice the Skarmory, but. I think we agree that it would have, it should have played out the same. And then, um, he blue flares me. It's fine. I'm able to boom burst. And, uh, here's where I find out that it's assault vested, um, which was unfortunate, but, uh, it's okay. I can revenge this thing fine now that, especially now that I know that it's assault vested, but it takes a hit fine. I knew that I was going to be able to take a hit and then deal massive damage. I really needed just that massive damage. I'm able to go into this Pyroarm and I kind of wanted to, uh, um, I kind of wanted to bluff Scarf a little bit. So I just go for the Hyper Voice. At this point, I'm really hoping for my Pyro to be able to win this match for me. I really wanted it to be able to Hyper Voice the rest of his team. Uh, but he did not take the bait at all. I thought that if I could kind of threaten uh, Scarf on this thing, that it would prevent the, the Coco from coming in and trying to bait in the, the Altaria. Did not happen at all. So, so he ends up uh, going for the Dazzling Gleam. I hit Fire Blast, and uh, this thing gets taken out. So, we're not in a great position here. And now, I don't know what to do. I think he has me in checkmate position. I think he wins no matter what anyway. No matter, despite any of that uh, nonsense with the with the Mega Evolution, but the only thing I can hope for now is that I can take it out with Hyper Voice, and I don't. It it uh, survives on about six percent, which really does stink. Maybe that that uh, extra damage on Vol Switch in the earlier game mattered a little bit, but uh, regardless, I needed more damage. I needed more rolls. I needed a lot more firepower than I uh, ended up bringing to this match, and. And now I'm definitely in a checkmate position if he just goes for uh, a Dragon Dance here. I, I thought that I was going to try to catch up catch him on a Roost because I thought that my best play might be to try to catch it Roosting up, go into um, this Manectric, be able to HP Ice it because HP Ice it was the most damage that I could do um, against this thing between Pyroar, Hyper Voice, and... Uh, and any attack this thing could go for. So if I could get this thing as low as possible with the HP ice, then maybe that opens a door for my Pyro to come in and then maybe get like a high roll on Hyper Voice. That was my only chance at winning. I thought in my, in my head, I don't know if there was any other way that I could have won this match, but regardless, that's going to be how the match ends with the Altaria getting the final two KOs and getting four KOs in this match overall. Um, it didn't go great, but like I said, there was a lot of threats that I had to respect. I don't know quite 
how I would have built this team differently. I think, I think if anything, I could have played a little bit better just trying to really figure out what threats that I had to prioritize first and how to deal with them. I don't think I can serve my resources particularly well. That's going to be week four. This was definitely a whole lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back again really, really soon with more weeks of the PCL and um, a bunch of other stuff that I'm going to try to catch up on in this coming week. Hopefully I can get everything together and get back on track with everything that I want to get back on track on. And I want to um, get into other things, but for right now, I feel like uh, there's a lot that I just want to catch up with and be done with. But uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to go once again out.